Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. And thank you very much. It's great to see so many of you here this evening. My name's Alistair Higgins. And is this working? <laughs> well, I'll just have to shout then. I have been had the pleasure of being chairman of Inch Green Dry Dock campaign for just over two years. This isn't just mine, there is a whole committee involved, especially Mr. Birds, as I think as you very well know. Can I first of all say if anybody has any mobile phones, can either switch them off or put them onto silent. I won't be speaking for very long, believe me, and that'll suit you. I'd just like to introduce the top table, if you don't mind. We'll start at this side and work my way across, if you don't mind. Dr. Jackie Stoll, candidate for the Scottish Liberal Demo Democrat Party. Mr. Martin McCluskey, the Scottish Liberal Party. No, Labour. Labour. <laughs> so it's Labour Party, my apologies. I've just pushed it. Welcome to the party. <laughs> Doing well. Live defection. <laughs> Our chair tonight is Mr. Alec Logan of the GMB Union, who is a, a shop steward. From the Scottish Conservative and Unionist Party, Mr. Halai Karun. And from the SNP, Mr. Ronnie McCown. Thank you very much. I'll pass you over to our chairman. Thank you. Thanks, Alistair. That one's working. <laughs> uh, thanks very much, ladies and gentlemen, for uh, turning up tonight in such large numbers. Uh, very appreciated for uh, the committee. On behalf of the committee, I'd like to thank you for your efforts in coming here tonight. Uh, the husband has been called. Uh, very grateful to the four candidates for turning up tonight and posing the questions to the candidates. So thank you very much for attending. Uh, just give you a wee bit of background for myself in regards to Ferguson's shipyard. Uh, I started in Ferguson's shipyard in 1977 and I'm still there just now today. Been through a lot, been through many changes, and one probably the one of the biggest regrets that all through all Ferguson's that we had never possessed a dry dock of our own. All the ships that we've had that I went to uh, the dry dock, the James Watt. If we had a dry dock for our own, I'm sure we wouldn't be in the position that we've been in for the last couple of years. So it's imperative that inch green dry dock is lying far too long, in our opinion. When I go back to work, I'm going to have a meeting, I'll ask for a meeting with Mr Mackay in regards to try and see if we can bring, put pressure on to bring the dry dock back into public ownership, as it seems he's done with the yard, because I think the two of them go hand in hand. The Scottish Government's taking over a shipyard to build ferries for Calmac and for islands. We're here to build the ships, but we need a dry dock to see us through, through a life service. So hopefully, the meeting tonight, uh, and the campaign that Ronnie and the committee have, have put up that we get some response, we get there somewhere along the line, and we can take field ports to task and start investing in Inverclyde. So thank you very much for attending and thanks for that. So we'll just start off a meeting uh, with a wee short ballot before we go. And sorry, if you want to be lucky or unlucky, I think Jackie's number one. I said so. The committee posts questions to Jackie. The questions and that are on your, your chairs. So we'll ask you. Candidates, you've got roughly five minutes for your, your speech. Uh, what we'll do is we'll listen from all the candidates and then we'll open up the floor for questions. And if you want any asking direct questions that's directed at a candidate, could you please specifically ask for the candidate? If it's just a general question for the, the four people, then it'll, we'll open up to the floor. Uh, there'll be floating microphones going up and down now. So if you just put your hand up, stand up, say who your name is and answer, ask your question. So I'll hand over to Jackie. Thanks very much. Right. Uh, apparently I can stand if I want. Um, if you want me to, I will, but I prefer to sit down if that's okay. Can you all hear me? Excellent. Well, good evening, ladies and gentlemen. I'd like to begin by thanking Robert and the Inch Green Campaign Group for their unflagging commitment to the redevelopment of the dry dock the constructive use of our priceless waterfront and for organising this hustings tonight. Would you all mind stepping into my TARDIS and let me take you on a short journey into the future. 
where we will be landing at Greenock Ocean Terminal. I've arranged for a beautiful summer's day, and as we look around, we can see the terminal is packed with visitors coming off the cruise ship. We can pick up the buzz in the crowd as they're waiting for their tour guide for the famous walk to the port that has become so popular that the buses to Loch Lomond now lie empty. The tour guide tells us about the rich historical heritage of our waterfront towns as we pass through the rewilded pathways. We come to the Heritage Centre at the James Watt Marina and climb aboard the Falls of the Clyde, listening over the tannoy where the voices of shipbuilders tell their story. After browsing in the interactive museum, we're allowed a little break. We can either have a drink at one of the bars and cafes dotted along the marina, or we might like to browse in the bijou shops in the converted sugar sheds, Apparently, the locals call it the Aladdin's Cave. Sipping our cool beer and gazing across at the mountains, we're relieved that they decided against a fish processing plant as the smell would have spoilt the experience. We have arrived at the now famous Inch Green, and although this is an industrialised dry dock, the tourist walkway has cleverly made this a feature. Inch Green has prospered since Greenock became a joining point instead of a cruise call. Apparently all the ships have to be dry docked for their certificates to be updated. And where better than here where the dry dock is just down the road? We're nearing the end of the tour, but not before we catch a glimpse of Ferguson Marine, which builds hydrogen engines for Scotland and the rest of the world cutting that carbon footprint of shipping and putting the Clyde shipbuilders back in business. The tour is over, but let's take a quick look round the port as we're here. The food bank has gone, there are young families everywhere, new shops, the town has had such a makeover we almost don't recognise it. The transformation of the waterfront has brought prosperity, stability and a thriving community. Now it's time to return to our hustings and begin the journey in real time. This is not pie in the sky, neither is it certainty, but it is one of the many real possibilities for the waterfront and Inverclyde. Inverclyde has been the victim of industrial decline, and we're suffering the results of this with a loss of jobs, a falling younger population, and pockets of serious poverty and deprivation. However, unlike the mining towns who had nothing left when the mines closed, we have a beautiful waterfront, an industrial potential, and a fiscal gold mine in the 150,000 cruise passengers expected by 2020 that step off a ship into Greenock every year. This will bring £26 million in annual visitor spend to the Scottish economy. And let's hope most of that could be in Inverclyde. We desperately need investment, and we have some in the Liberal Democrat initiative of the City Deal, which was created by Nick Clegg and which will bring in 27.5 million to Inverclyde. However, more is needed. The Liberal Democrats have pledged investment to the nations, especially in regions that have suffered industrial downturn. The money will come from a range of sources, but predominantly, if elected to form a government, we will stop Brexit. This will end the political chaos and business uncertainty that has dogged us for three years and allow our economy to grow again, which will create a remain bonus of 50, million, 50 billion pounds. But investment alone is not enough. Liberal Democrats believe in devolved power and were instrumental in supporting the development of Scottish devolution. We believe that local people should have a say in what happens to their community, which is why the creation of a citizens panel is crucial. There should be a working partnership of investors, local politicians, councillors and citizens. The partnership must be open, transparent, inclusive and cross-party. It would be helpful to invite visionaries who have successfully reimagined other waterfront projects to help us to consider possibilities that may never have occurred to us previously. In the words of Albert Einstein, imagination is everything, 
It is the preview of life's coming attractions. Thank you. <clears throat> Thank you very much, Jackie. Uh, now we move on. Gentlemen on the left. Thank you. Uh, yes, uh, ladies and gentlemen, my name is Harun Malik. Uh, despite the introduction, that, that is how you pronounce my name. Um, now, you've all got in front, underneath your seats or in front of you a written response to tonight's <coughs> questions. I will also post my written response to the questions as well uh, online, either on my Facebook uh, or the Constituencies uh, Association's Facebook. So you can read that at your own leisure. I'm here to talk to you today, and I'm here today, just like every single one of you, because things are going wrong. They've been going wrong for the last 20 years. We've seen our industries in our country decline. The two major things, the two major points of our campaign and the focus of our ca campaign are simple. We need to fight for jobs and reverse the decline in Inverclyde. The second point that we are fighting on is crime and how crime is affecting our communities. Now, these are the two most central and important issues in our campaign. My party is different. It, is, it can be distinguished from every other party on this table. Some of the ideas that I'm going to present to you tonight, you may not, not agree, agree with. You may never even have historically agreed with these ideas. But what I would ask you to do is keep an open mind and look at the opportunities that this particular situation presents to us. Now, there have been two issues dominating Westminster, Brexit and independence. I'm sure my friend to the left will give you a positive argument for independence. I'm here today to let you know that I believe in the union and I stand fully committed, along with my party, to prevent a second independence referendum. Other than that, I am the only candidate on this table who supports Brexit. Now, there are many in my party who did not initially campaign for Brexit. Many distinguished members of my party who supported Remain in the referendum. Democracy relies on the consent of the people. When we have a free and democratic vote, even if there's a result that you don't agree with, democracy relies on you to respect everybody in the whole country and appreciate and respect what everybody has to say. When you have a democratic result, you then respect that and you implement that. And that is the mandate that we are standing on today. So many people ask politicians, well, that's all well and good. I've watched politicians argue about Brexit and independence. The question I always ask is, well, how does that affect me? How does that change my life? Excuse me, Harun. Harun. Yes. Harun, we're here to talk about the dialogue, not about Brexit, and not about the politics, but who's to blame the Scottish Government. Absolutely. So, could you please stick to the brief there's, and there's one, the dry dock is, it comes first? Absolutely. There's one policy that I can offer today, and it's the only, I'm the, we're the only party that can offer this policy, and that is a free port. Free port status for Inverclyde. Now, many of you may think or might not know what a free port is or what it means. We're currently in the EU, and the EU has free zones at the moment. Now, free zones have been declining since we've been in the EU. There's only one free zone left in the UK, the Isle of Man. Now, there are four key points that, uh, a, a, free, <coughs> that a free port can offer the people of Inverclyde. That is money, jobs and investment. 
If we were to secure pre-port status, there are 10 available to the UK. Inverclyde could make a bid for pre-port status in the UK. Now, what does that mean for us? It means that companies could come here, they could set up in the free port zone, they could have duty exemption, duty deferral, tariff inversion and tax exemption. Now, what does that mean? It means, for example, if we take a company like Apple, it means you could sit, and, and there are three countries that we can look at that currently trade across the world. They're currently our competitors. We're non-competitive at the moment. We have America, we have China, and we also have Dubai. Now, currently, in terms of the free port, we have duty exemptions. Now, what does a duty exemption mean? A duty exemption means a product can enter the zone, enter into Inverclyde, it won't have any import tariffs, it means that we can process that product here and engineer it and then export it. What does that mean? It means we could buy pipe parts in from China, we could put them together here and we could sell them to America. The other point is duty deferral. What does that mean for us? It means we could, and this is, a, this is a point that's normally used towards Christmas, it means we could import goods in, we could make them here and we could keep them here. At the point of entering into the free port zone, you wouldn't pay any duties. So if you bought a product and you manufactured it in September, you wouldn't have to pay any duties until December. Tariff inversion, what does that mean? Well, tariff inversion means that we can put... Um, I'm going to wrap That's it up, really. You know where the entry guide on is? It's down That's the road. I'm going to jump to the chair. Yeah. Arun, I'm just going through the report that you sent to the yep. committee and sent to myself. Yep. And everything that you says is not what I've got in front of me. Yeah, the answers so to many of the questions, like for example, your, you'll see question yep. seven. seven it, yep. It's Freeport. Freeport, that's one question, Freeport. Yeah. What we're asking for is what you're doing and willing to assist. And um, as a candidate, prospective yeah. candidate for Inverclyde, what you, as yeah. a prospective candidate or MP yeah. for this area, yeah. what you are going to do. Well, no, but three ports and what we're we're going to do for dry dock absolutely we're in so general like to brief, please. we're in general decline what that means is we need more trade we need the conditions to be able to trade right now we're in the west of europe what i want us to do is be the center of the world there's no reason we can't compete with china or america or dubai we just need to have the correct regulations <clears throat> at the moment EU regulations prevent us from doing that. Whether or not you agree with Brexit, this is an excellent opportunity for us to deliver that. Thanks, Arun. <laughs> okay. Uh, Ronnie, number three, did you hear a gentleman if you'd like to stand up? You want me to stand? Mm -hmm. The problem, problem with stand is I've got to move the microphones, I don't know if you're filming as well, but... Uh, if you'd left the microphone out, you'll be fine. Hello, Mr Winters, this is my command. I can. There we are. Thank you. <coughs> it's not what I was going to do, but here we go anyway. Uh, yeah, like a lot of people in Inverclyde, uh, I grew up in Inverclyde. A lot of people in this audience, I grew up in Inverclyde. When I was a kid, the shipyards were busy. Everybody knew men that worked in the yards, your fathers, your uncles, your brothers. It was a place to go for men and boys alike. The DNA of Greenock and Port Glasgow was forged in the yards. And as the song says back then, the hammers ding dong was the song of the Clyde. But today, there are more ships been built per tonnage across the globe than have ever been built before. But our ship industry on the Clyde has sunk to unthinkable levels. I'm not going to stand here and give you a history lesson, but we all know, everybody in this room knows, that Margaret Thatcher locked herself into a battle with heavy industry, and she destroyed communities who were dependent on coal mining, steel production, and shipbuilding. The banking and financial sectors became the altar to worship on. Apprenticeships became as rare as hen's teeth and she left hard-working men to rot. While a Tory government 
oversaw the decline. Labour's 50 MPs that represented Scotland earned the name the Feeble 50. They could do nothing. As part of the UK establishment, they sat back and watched. The years passed and Westminster ticked talks from Labour to Tory and back again. Still, the decline continued. It didn't happen overnight. We won't solve this overnight. There were opportunities to halt it, or indeed turn it around. The oil industry was booming, and yet Inverclyde, for some reason with its world-class workforce, was bypassed. The lack of inward investment from the UK governments during the 80s and 90s devastated heavy industry. Never forget that being asked what was her greatest achievement, Margaret Thatcher said, Tony Blair and New Labour. We forced our opponents to change their minds. Well, I spent 35 years working in distribution, supply chain management, inventory control, and manufacturing. 35 years learning and gaining an understanding of the realities, of the challenges, and the opportunities. From ICI explosives to DuPont paint, from Pepsi Cola to Loctite glue, I have seen firsthand companies succeed and fail. I have felt the pain of redundancy and have enjoyed the fruits of successes. I don't just talk about industry. I have experienced it and I have lived it. Redeveloping the Lower Clyde was never going to be easy. But we need stability and long-term planning to create what is required. Neither Labour nor Tory have ever produced that. And I will not stand here today and promise you the earth. I will not pretend that I can magic up billions of pounds for imaginary, if plausible, sounding schemes. It's tougher than that. The reality is harder because we're trying to regenerate in areas where the roots have disappeared completely. A wise man once said, when's the best time to plant a tree? And the answer was 25 years ago. But the second best time is now. We need to plant seeds. We need to establish an environment where companies can grow. The document I provided you with, the island of Inverclyde, I wrote nearly four years ago. And that outlines my vision of what we should be doing in Inverclyde. And it's about engineering excellence, renewable excellence, and incubation units. We're not going to buy in the finished solution. We're going to grow it from within Inverclyde. It's impossible to buy a ready-made solution. You can't buy a shipyard in a box. The SNP Scottish Government has, twi has stepped in twice now to save Ferguson Marine. In many quarters, they will get criticised for doing this. But having a working yard which can push forward and create more jobs and diversify is much easier than starting from nothing or a mothballed yard with no workforce. Because it's more than just a yard. When a yard closes, other related businesses suffer, from the suppliers of crucial components to the local paper shop. Savings Ferguson's is crucial to any growth in shipbuilding and marine engineering on the Lower Clyde. So where were the Tories when Ferguson Marine were shut? What happened to the frigate factory we were all promised? Inscreen has been land banked by pool property. The ability of people or companies to do that must be challenged. Land reform in Scotland is desperately needed. Politicians will make great promises when they want your vote. Some can make them safe in the knowledge that they'll never be in a position of power anyway. So they can and do promise the earth. Before believing their promises, please look at their track record. At times like this, we need strong leadership and vision not just promises of billions of pounds of infrastructure or capital investment placed on top of the shifting sands of political expediency. I have networked with organisations, major companies and government departments, including the MOD, for nearly five years now, as your MP. I have represented Inverclyde in a positive way, talking about the positive aspects at every opportunity. I have worked cross-party and always put the interests of Inverclyde first. I want that privilege to represent you again for another five years. And if not finish what I started, at least move on to the next stage.
Tak for det. Nej, vi er vant til Martin, thanks. Um, can everyone hear me okay? Yeah. Thank you, Alex. Um, and can I just firstly begin by paying tribute to Alex Logan and also to the workforce at Ferguson's. Um, if it wasn't for Alex Logan as a shop steward at Ferguson's, if it wasn't for the strength of that workforce, we definitely wouldn't have a yard there to talk about today. And I also want to thank... And I also want to thank, of course, Alistair, Robert and all the in-screen team for organising this debate tonight. The questions that we are faced with this evening in this debate are some of the most important questions that I think we'll face um, in this election. And they really all boil down to this. How can we ensure that everyone in Inverclyde has a good job to go to? How can we then ensure that they have the strongest rights and strongest protections when they're there doing that job? And how do we make sure that they have a decent wage when they're uh, at the end of the week uh, when they're doing it and i think it's really summed up in the campaign strap line inverclyde needs jobs we've seen it on the hoardings outside of the dry dock over the last couple of years but i'd go a little bit further than that i would say inverclyde needs decent high quality and unionized jobs because because here are the problems here are the problems that we're facing in this area today a higher than average unemployment rate too many, far too many of our young people not getting the start in life that they deserve and not getting even the opportunity to progress into work when they leave school or college. People facing, and I've heard it over and over again in this campaign on the doorstep conversations that we've been having, people getting poverty pay in jobs that pay so little that they have to come back from one job at five o'clock and step right back out the door at six o'clock to go into another job just to make ends meet. And workers in this area have been treated like commodities, whether that's people on zero hours contracts and conditions that we thought we had left behind decades ago, or whether that's, uh, whether that's employers who don't think twice about laying people off with no warning and no redundancy pay. So my message to people in Inverclyde and in, in this room tonight is this, that we deserve so much better than this. Our country deserves so much better than this, and people here deserve so much better than this and that is exactly what is on the ballot paper next Thursday. I don't remember what Greenock was like at the peak of shipbuilding because I was born in 1986 and grew up during the period when this area was struggling to rebuild so I learned about that history from my family mainly from my granddad who was the Boilermaker, Boilermakers Union treasurer at Scots and I saw the difference that the change in government from Tory to Labour made in 1997 when we were back in power after 18 years, whether that was the introduction of the minimum wage that lifted so many people in this area out of poverty, a massive reduction in unemployment. We had a, we had a point in this town in the late 1980s when one in five men were out of work and we lifted those people back into employment. A fairer benefit system, record investment in our public services, the likes of which in 1990 we've never seen since. But we're not here tonight to talk about the past. We're here tonight to decide on what action we want to take for the future. And that's why I am proud to be standing on a manifesto that has clear and concrete plans for industry. Now, we've heard tonight from Ronnie that he wants to say that these plans are pie in the sky. But just a few years ago, Ronnie and the SNP told us they could create an, a, a, an independent country in 18 months. And tonight, we seem to hear that we can't take action to reopen a dry dock in the next five years. So here's, so here's, so here's, here's what we are going to do and what our manifesto pledges mean for this campaign. First, we are going to create a 450 billion national transformation fund. That's going to invest in projects like Inch Green, projects that can kickstart our economy and provide us with the high quality, well-paid and unionised jobs that we need in this area. And as you'll see from the letter that um, I sent to the campaign a couple of weeks ago, I'm committing again tonight to going to, to going to the Treasury and asking for that meeting with the Labour Chancellor in week one to get our share of that National Transformation Fund money for Greenock and for the Inch Green project. And I'll work alongside the campaign to develop that plan. I'm not going to come in on high and actually decide what's right. I'm going to sit down with the campaign and decide how that money can be best spent. Second, 
We will publish a new national shipbuilding strategy. We have one from the Conservative government at the moment. Um, it, uh, to my mind, it's not worth the paper it's written on. We're going to publish a, a new national shipbuilding strategy that keeps all, all Royal Navy and Royal Fleet Auxiliary contracts in the UK. It's a disgrace that Royal Navy contracts are going overseas where we need to be investing in shipbuilding in the UK. Building in the UK makes strategic sense, it makes security sense, and it makes economic sense. And again, I'd be arguing for more of that work to come to the Clyde and either to possibly Ferguson's or to a redeveloped in-screen site. Um, and we know we've already got the potential for some of the Type 31 frigate work um, to come to Ferguson's, um, the work that's been uh, just won by Babcock at Resyth. And third, I'll lobby the MOD and importantly the Scottish Government, we can't forget the Scottish Government's role in this, to include in-screen in the list of nationally significant strategic assets. We could have had that, um, that dry dock included in that list nearly 10 years ago, but it was left out of both the national planning framework and some of the national renewables plans. Inch Green is one of the UK's largest dry docks. It can't be left to rot just because a private company, in this case, Peel Ports, doesn't want to develop it. And that's why I'll also, in week one as your MP, arrange to meet with Peel Ports and the Chief Executive of Peel Ports, which I've already done, as you'll see from the letter, and arranged to meet with the Chief Executive of the Council to put, to, again, to them the plans for end screening to find out exactly what they've got planned for that site. And if there's nothing forthcoming, we do need to start looking at compulsory purchase and community ownership as an option if they are not forthcoming with any plans. Finally, redeveloping end screen or securing the future of Ferguson's is only the start. We need to have a wider push for better jobs in this area and to crack down on low pay and insecurity in work. And that's why I want to see a £10 minimum wage for all workers from the age of 16 up, not this under, you know, people under 25 getting paid less. I want to see everyone getting paid a £10 minimum wage and to tackle insecurity as well, ending things like zero hours contracts. But it's also why I would support the GMB in their campaign for an end to the routine use of agency labour at Ferguson's. And I hope that the Scottish Government do the right thing and award permanent contracts to those workers, some of them who have been on agency contracts for the last um, two years. So that is the opportunity that is on the ballot paper next week in this election. It's the opportunity to build the kind of country that people in this area deserve, to elect a Labour government that's going to re-industrialise our economy, re-industrialise our waterfront, that will increase rights and protections at work. And a Labour MP for Inverclyde who will be with you on the front line of this fight for investment, for better pay and for decent, high quality jobs for everyone who lives and works in this area. Thank you. Thanks, Martin. Uh, early and gentlemen, we're uh, going to op open up for questions. Uh, as I said earlier, if the question is a specific question to uh, any one of the candidates, or is it just a generic question for all four to answer? Uh, if you stand up, state your name. Uh, roughly, we're looking for questions of a, a minute. We're not looking for one piece. Hello. Um, can you hear? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, my name is Isabel De Lucy. Um, I'm a member of the campaign for Inch Green. Um, would the candidates, and this is for everyone, would the candidates agree that it's extremely unhealthy for Inverclyde to have one company, Peel Ports, owning or leasing 100, almost 100%, 90% of our coastal industrial land and facilities and controlling our rivers? And harbour as harbour master, and all this from Merseyside. Thank you. Yep. I'll let Ronnie answer that one first. It is. It is. Is it on? Yeah, it should be. I'll shout in case the micro is not picking up. It's extremely unhealthy. We go into a situation with pure ports purchased from Clyde Port, whole swathes of the River Clyde. That was sold to them, the Clyde Board, years earlier for an absolute pittance. It was esteemed as land and not worth having because a lot of it was contaminated. So the council got off their books as quick as they could. A bad deal, a bad deal then, a bad deal now. Bill was in a situation where they've land banked it. They knew they could get this land cheap, and they weren't going to do anything with it, but they understand the value of land. I spoke to Bill Ports, and Martin said he's going to speak to Bill Ports. I spoke to him as recently as this afternoon. They absolutely guaranteed they will not fill it in 
and build houses on it, which is good, because we want to keep it as industrial land. They also say, and the point out which seems to have been missed here, is that right now, Innsgreen is a working dry dock. It's not building huge vessels we'd like to see, but it is a working dry dock, which means it's dry, the pump house is working, and people are employed there. They're building the pontoon right now for the new cruise ships to come in. So on the basis of that, people assure me, and I, I'm taking them at their word here, that they see a future, and a healthy future for pool boats, for the, the, the industry in dialogue. The history does not over well for that, so it's up to the job of where the MP is to keep on their case. But I, the first meeting I arranged four and a half years ago when I became the MP was between Peel Post and Jim McCall. Before the campaign started, I recognised the issues we had with Inchgreen and the ownership of all the Clyde. It has not been utilised properly, hasn't been utilised properly for the people of Inverclyde for decades upon decades. Thanks, Ronnie. Arun? Yeah. Uh, no. Okay. Okay. Um, I would go a little bit deeper than just to question who owns the dock. What I would say is there's underlying decline here that we need to address. Regardless of who owned the dock, the decline of our industries, that, that's the issue. There needs to be trade, there needs to be money flowing in and out so that that dock can serve a purpose. In relation to Peel Ports owning the dock, there are already jobs that count on this dock. Now, the problem I have with criticising private companies or any company in this area is that we desperately need jobs. We desperately need companies to come here and provide more jobs for the community. So if we're sitting here and we're criticising a particular company, I would love more than anybody else to have more jobs here, more investment. I spent most of my answer trying to explain a very complicated um, notion or a, an idea to a lot of people. We need to address the underlying problem and we need to support businesses that are already here so we can keep the jobs that we already have and create more. Thank you. Thanks, Aaron. Martin? Um, the short answer, Isabel, is yes. Um, I do agree with you on that. Um, I think there's a few things in the, the letter that go a little bit deeper on this. I think there, there needs to be, um, and I know that my colleague Paul Sweeney, who's one of the uh, Labour MPs in Glasgow, has also asked questions around potential anti-competitive practices with the ownership being in, in the hands of one um, company. Um, I met with the chief exec last year. It was one of the first meetings I had when I was, after I was selected as a Labour candidate um, for this area. There were a number of issues that I raised at the time. At that point, there was the suggestion that there might be MOD work that might come there. We made very clear, myself and Neil Bibby, who's one of the West of Scotland um, MSPs, made quite clear that if that wasn't forthcoming, this was really their last chance. I think they've passed that last chance in terms of demonstrating um, willingness for the kind of uh, for the kind of scale of ambition that the, the campaign and myself would have have for the in-screen site. Um, and just on the question of, I, I think it was um, Haroon said a moment ago, alluded to ownership. Ownership is important. You know, these questions about who owns these assets, it's not some sort of abstract question. Um, if this was a, uh, if this was a, a Scottish or community owned asset or a, was owned by, you know, a group that was far closer to this community, I don't think we would see the same kind of um, behaviour taking place that is at the moment where it's basically been left to rot. Because I think the ownership of something is important because if people, if people care about what they, what they own, they are more likely to then um, invest properly in it. So yes, I think it's something we need to look at. And I think maybe actually there'll be an opportunity, um, as has been alluded to before, to, you know, with the, the potential sale of um, and the divestment in Camel Laird um, over the next period of time. Thanks, Martin. Jackie? Well, I agree it was a, a dreadful deal, and I think it um, has, uh, it's historical, and I don't think um, uh, in, it's difficult to know what to do about it, but I do believe uh, people have talked about the right to buy, but I think that, that can be quite difficult if, if you haven't got the... Um, investment. I believe the council can have the right to force a sale if a company has um, left something to decline. 
So that might be something that we could consider doing, that the council could sit, consider doing if Peel Ports can sin, continue to just sit on Inch Green and not do anything about the dock. I would also like to say we've talked quite a bit about um, the historical thing and how we've got here. I think it's really important to say we need to draw a line and see where we go from here. And Ronnie was talking about the sort of shipbuilding jobs, uh, you know, that men wanted and all the rest of it. We want more jobs. We want high quality jobs, but we also want a range of jobs for the whole people in Verclyde. And that includes the women who, yes, of course, I would like to see women doing engineering jobs. And I'm sure they will do them as well as any man. But it's not necessarily the sort of choice of jobs. We want jobs for everybody here. And I feel we keep ignoring, I'm not saying that the um, jobs in the shipyard and the dry dock are not important, but we are ignoring the tourism that is coming into this, um, into Inverclyde and the jobs that can provide for a whole range of entrepreneurial people and industries that we've got, the cafes, the bars, the heritage centers, the tour operators, the taxi drivers, it generates more employment for everybody. Quite agree with Martin. Those jobs are really important and they need to be protected just as much as the jobs in, in the um, shipbuilding and dry dock. So I think we need, the, the thing about the, the free port, we, <laughs> Don't, don't crowd out the, the golden goose we've already got, which is our cruise ships, by having a whole lot of containers. Let's have industry and tourism working together. Thanks, Jackie. Just on a wee personal note, Jackie, uh, we actually do encourage, uh, within Ferrix Marine, we've got a number of young female apprentices, and they're just as good as the boys. <laughs> Thanks very Great. much. Somebody else? Uh, John Burley. I, um, I've got a concern here, and, and that is you're building houses a couple of metres from the hard surface of the quayside at the Great Harbour. I would like a moratorium so they don't build any more houses in the Great Harbour or surround, because it's going to stymie any idea, because I, Jackie, I have a, um, an, imagi um, an imagination, and my imagination is for a continental cruise car ferry to come to the Great Harbour mm. and to go from the Great Harbour to Dunleary to Spain. But it won't happen if they build houses round about. You talk about crown jewels. In Spain and in Italy, the crown jewels are the harbours. They didn't give the harbours to any private people. They kept them in the government and the government is reaping the reward. Now, I'm sorry, Alan, but you mentioned if, if, if they own them, but at CalMac, they own Gurok Harbour. It's been mothballed. Nothing's happening with it. The Scottish government own it, and it's doing nothing. It's sinking into the ground along with the Great Harbour. So I would like a moratorium that no more sh um, houses are built in the Great Harbour or surround until we get as you say, a free port we get. Now, you mentioned cruise ships here. Do you know why they're putting tariffs, passenger tariffs on cruise ships? Because the passengers don't spend any money. They come ashore. You'll be lucky if they spend £10 or £20. And what we need is car ferries. Because in Ireland, they have car ferries and they've got a GDP of about 6%. Scotland's GDP is less than 1%. We need car ferries that come from Europe to Scotland. We and that. Yeah? Right. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, just to remind everybody why we're here tonight. We're here to discuss the, what we're going to do to save Inch Green Dry Dock. We're not here for Brexit, we're not here for anything else. We're here, and the people are giving up their time. So, the questions, please, could you refer to? to Inch Green Dry Dock and what the plan is what these prospective candidates are going to do for Inverclyde and for the Dry Docks. Thank you very much. Is there anybody else? 
uh, lady here. Christina Boyd. One of the things about investing in industry and investing in Inch Green is that the government has to collect all the taxes it possibly can so that it can invest in Inch Green and other industries throughout the country. Uh, I'd like to ask all the, quest all the candidates one particular question. Have you ever been involved in avoiding tax, including setting up a company or being part of a company that pays you in dividends instead of paying you a salary? Uh, because as many people will know if you're paid in dividends, uh, the amount of tax you pay is far, far less. Again, I don't think that's a no. Uh, as a qualified solicitor, <laughs> I don't think uh, that's an issue. Uh, well, can I just quickly say something, if you don't mind? Is it just on that one or on both of them? On both of them. Both of them. Uh, it's oh. just an important... But on that, on that one, no. Um, are we, are, if we're answering, I think it was John's question. I don't know if you want to give Roddy the option yeah, to answer yeah, that yeah, one as well. What was I think question? it's important what, what, what you were saying. <laughs> Just, um, yes. Yeah, so, so, okay. Sorry, John. Uh, more through housing, I have I've opposed many housing projects in Inverclyde. I think we're very, very quick to find brownfield sites or old industrial sites, whatever you think, what we do here, we need to increase the population of sites that's built houses, that's the wrong way to go about it as far as I'm concerned, the generation of jobs is what will, will repopulate Inverclyde, so absolutely, I, the, the, we said, not going totally off topic, uh, but going back to 1217, the Charter of the Forests, the, the common land was for the common man, and that was the idea behind it, and we, for 800 years we've walked away from that principle, and the, the coastline of Inverclyde belongs to every single person that lives in Inverclyde, and it should be utilised to its maximum. And an answer to Christina's question, no. Um, the, the issue here is that land is lying there, it's not getting used. The whole of the industry is in decline. That's the point of it. If the land's lying there unused, people then want to try and use the land and the most profitable thing that they can think of for use of the land is housing. Now that's the fundamental issue here. We need to address the underlying problem as to why trade stopped, why have the industries declined. My question to other parties are, what is your idea to get industry moving again, to get trade flowing again, so that we can have a various different ideas? Everybody in here would love, love to see it. I'd like to see the other parties come up with a similar idea or an idea to come at, to to um, be an alternative to the Freeport, because I'll tell you one thing: none of them can sit here and support it. None of them can, none, none of them can commit to it. Thanks, Aaron. And that's the that's the genuine choice that I um, put before you. Can I, can I just come back at that then? No, a ding dong here. Well, well, just, just say that, no, well, to say that none of us can support that, if you have to define what a freeport actually is. Freeports can be used for laundering money, so obviously that's a negative to it, but freeports run properly can generate a lot of money. But you have to define exactly how you're going to shrink wrap your, your freeport and bring you to Inverclyde and make it benefit the local economy and not be used for people to be laundering money in the Cayman Islands. Okay, I'm not going to get an argument. <laughs> so. I'll move on. Martin. Um, on, on Christina's question, no. On uh, John's question, um, just to un unpack that a little bit. Uh, the housing question I've addressed in the letter, um, I don't think that any land that um, is either, you know, could be used for in you know, industrial purposes should then be used for housing. Um, I wouldn't sit here tonight and say I would have a moratorium on all house building. I don't believe that. I do think we need houses in Inverclyde because, yeah, yeah. No, and, and I, I take that you're not saying that. Um, you know, I don't, think we can oppose um, and, and shouldn't oppose all house building, but we need to be doing it in the correct areas and not using up land that, um, that could otherwise be used productively for, for industry. Just on your point on um, car ferries as a sort of historical uh, point, um, it was actually, one of the ideas was actually looked at, I think, around about 2000 by the former member of the Scottish Parliament, Duncan McNeill, was moving the uh, car ferry from Stranraer, the, the, the Irish ferry from Stranraer to, to here. Um, and there was actually a feasibility study, I think, done at the time to look at it. Um, and, and it was found to be feasible, as far as I understand it, but um, obviously there was further redevelopment done. So, you know, it is something that I think 
deserves um, some um, investigation. I think you'd obviously need to look carefully at what that would mean for the, especially the road infrastructure around here, which we already know is 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 under a significant amount of strain. Thanks, Martin. Jackie. I'll stand because I think some people like it. Was is it John? John, I absolutely um, agree with you about the housing. And also, your point illustrates why it is so important to have a citizens' panel. My uh, flight of fancy at the beginning wasn't, this is what should happen. This was just, imagine it could be possible. So it doesn't matter what it is, as long as it's something that uh, is going to be good for Inverclyde, for jobs, it's going to enhance the area. And if that's a car ferry, it's a car ferry. And I absolutely agree, we've got enough housing. We don't want to be putting permanent things like houses that we can't do more imaginative things. Once a house, house is sold, that's it. It doesn't produce anything else. It doesn't do anything else. And it prevents all these great ideas from flourishing. And I did come up with an idea, Haroon. It was actually that the dry dock could be servicing the cruise ships. It might not be possible, I have no idea, but it was an idea and it would provide a regular service for the dry dock, so, okay. Yeah, but we need oh, concrete no. plans and we, no. need, we need an answer. No to the tax. <laughs> I, I've always paid my tax. <laughs> Thanks, sir. I uh, take Johnny at the back, he's been waiting for a while to get in, and then Robert. Get a microphone at the back first. Right, we're, we're talking about why is industry not coming here? Think for a minute. I'm Amazon. I pay no taxes. I get every benefit going free. Pure ports, where's their head office? Tax haven. He gets everything going that he can get going. And we'll take the waterfront and go back and let's think about it. If you go back in your history, and there's gentlemen locally who try to fight for it. That keep the, the waterfront and it's in Parliament where it was not to be sold and unfortunately they didn't have the money or the money or we'll say a really good QC who looked at it and said it and a judge said to them you asked the wrong questions and they lost that out and you go back Clyde Port started it was all the Harbour Trust right up the Clyde and what did they do sold it and a gentleman came millionaires overnight they got it and run it, and Peel Ports taking it over. How can we encourage anybody with money to come here and invest when you don't get the benefits, tax benefits, or anything else? That's the first thing we've got to do. And there are jobs out there, but there are not enough jobs. We've got to look for more jobs, and that's for everybody. Because everybody's not going to be, as my mother used to say, you're not going to, oh, oh, going to be a brain surgeon, son. Some means I've got to brush the streets as well. And we've all got to work together. And that's facts. That's what we look at. Now, a, a wee bit sort of niggle me tonight, and I don't mean any disrespect to you, Chairman, but Inverclyde Council sat in that working group and worked with you, and thank heavens they did. And the folk that were telling us, we don't want this, we don't want that, we're glad Ferguson's is here. The same thing happened up at uh, Texas Instruments, where people want to give their jobs away. And I said to one in particular, do you realize you're selling your son or daughter's job? And they have got that place, and they're telling me it's a great investment. And that was a council working. Thank heaven just came, and we could work as a team. That's what we've got to do in this area. Take pride in your area. My parents didn't come. They came here. My mother was married, my father, he, my father. And can you know, I could have left, you know, I'm proud to say I've come here and we've got, oh, we've got great workforce. You've got a good, bad and ugly. But 99% of the people here are decent law-abiding citizens looking for a decent job. Let's work together to get that job. But until we get the rights where somebody investing can turn around and get the same benefits as people who are shipped never now because of their, head, their headquarters get shifted. That's got to stop, and they've got to start paying their dues. Thanks. Thanks. Is that a question to this panel? I'll do it. I'll 
Men nej, nej, fint. Thanks, Janet. Ronnie wants to give a reply. Yeah, a quick, quick minute in that, Janet. Yeah, I also started one business and I know how hard it is to get up and get running. And I didn't get any tax breaks and nobody came and gave me any great grants to, 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 to buy the equipment to, to establish myself. You know, but as you say, you get on and you do it. But you talk briefly about TI. TI are now Dials Incorporated and the vast majority of what turned that company around is due to the management team at now Dials Incorporated. They performed miracles to save that company and they're now getting masses of investment, tens of millions of dollars are getting invested in Dials now here in Inverclyde. So for people from outside Inverclyde can see what we've got and see what we've got to offer. It's up to us to promote it a little bit more and talk ourselves up and continually talking ourselves down. But it's about the mix. You've got big multinationals like Dials who spend tens of millions of pounds. But you've got to go to grassroots I keep on saying this, we've got to plant the seeds now and grow industry from within. And some of those industries will fail. This is the way it goes. But we've got to keep on doing that and eventually we'll turn over a couple of good ones and they will provide the jobs for the future generations of Scots and, and people from Inverclyde as well. It's a mixture. We will not just bring in the big bids of another IBM we used to have and employed thousands of people. So that, those days have gone. The way companies work, those days have gone. We have to have lots of smaller companies. We have to encourage people to come into Inverclyde but also grow from within. Thanks, ladies and gentlemen. Time's moving on now, so I'm going to bring in Robert first and then the gentleman. Give the microphone at the back here first. Uh, Robert Bird, Secretary of the Campaign. I'd just like to say that I think there's a golden opportunity now. With Ferguson's becoming nationalised yesterday, I think, as you said earlier on, Alec, there's an opportunity for Ferguson's to grow. They, they can grow and expand. I know they're limited to the size of the keel they can put down, but inch green is there. They could build sections in, and then they could uh, build the boat in inch green. But more importantly, the ferries that run up and down Scotland, they're going to be renewed over the next 20 years. And at this moment in time, the ferries are going down to Merseyside. Some come here to, uh, to uh, what do you call it, to the Garvel, uh, to Dales. But a lot of them go down to Merseyside for maintenance, their annual service, their maintenance, or their repair. Now, it's not cost effective to send them down there. Absolutely not cost effective. And we have actually got the figures of every ferry in the water and tell you how much it costs to go to Merseyside compared to how it costs to come to Greenock. Ferguson's, the problem you've had with the dry dock is they've not got enough work to retain the workforce. However, with Ferguson's, now you've got a, an adequate workforce and building at this moment in time, they could diversify. They could diversify into maintaining the ferries. At the same time, they could be building larger ships, building them in the dry dock, and at the same time, maintain the ferry fleet, along with Dales. So there is opportunities there. And the only thing that's stopping is, is Peel Ports. Peel Ports don't want the competition that that would create because it would stop the Scottish ferries going down to Merseyside for their annual service and maintenance. Peelports has done very well out in Verclyde. They've got East India Harbour, 125 year lease for a pound a year. Well, why don't they give us inch green dry dock for a pound a year and let us develop it? Yeah. So what is the panel going to say for that? Thank you very much, Robert. Yes. Any other panel want to come in on that question? Um, I, I couldn't agree more with that, Robert. Um, I think we've got a, whoever the MP is um, after this election is going to have a big job in their hands in terms of uh, lobbying the Scottish government for the correct action around the ferries. Like we have Calmac headquartered in Gourock, we've got Seamal, we've got Ferguson's, and we've got the potential of Inchscreen. There is a great opportunity there to have an, to, to basically make Inverclyde the centre of basically the centre of excellence for our work on any of the ferry fleet um, and I think that's that's one thing that should be a should be a priority you know we've had to fight in the past for Calmac to retain their um, headquarters in Gourock that's now you know that's now there and I think it'll be there for an, for a, hopefully a long time in terms of the back end and all the ticketing and all that kind of stuff but let's actually be really imaginative and let's push the Scottish government now to make sure that they actually join all those dots together and ensure that we actually make this area the, the, the hub of all the ferry work. Because there's, no, there's really no excuse. We've essentially got three out of the four parts that I just mentioned 
are to one extent or another. I know they're you know arm's length companies or have you might want to define it, but they are all in state government control. So why can't we start to join those dots and make and take advantage of this? You know, something that could be a really unique um, set of circumstances to actually you know create huge numbers of of jobs and boost the economy in this area. Thanks. Anybody else want to come in on it? I'll just, um, yeah, I'll just say uh, we've got the city deal money and if we wanted to put that into making dry, the dry dock viable, uh, I don't see why we shouldn't do that, to be honest, because we'll be building all these other things and actually it's the actual dry dock will be ignored. So I would go for seeing if we couldn't use that money. Uh, and if Peel ports don't play ball, I think we should force them. I'm sure it's if they don't, um, you know, do something with the dry dock, uh, there is a, a, a force to sell, which we might implement. Can I answer that? Okay. Well, can I just say something? The money, as I understand, it's 27.5 million. It's about 19 million going for the ocean terminal, about 4 million going for Inverkip infrastructure, and it's something like 9.5 to do work on Inch Green, which is the, um, the fishing vessels, uh, a, a training centre, a fish processing plant, um, but not actually doing anything to the dry dock itself. I believe that's correct. Mm -hmm. Uh, excuse me, ladies and gentlemen. See, if you want to ask a question, could you come through the chair and use a microphone, please? Thank you very much. So, okay, Ronnie's going to respond, and then I'll come back to the questions. Arun, thank you very much. Uh, can I just say, inch green dry docks themselves it supports 60 jobs uh, as it stands right now. The problem here is the problem here is we need government funding. Now, there's only two sources of government funding. There's the UK government and there's the Scottish government. Now, the SNP have failed us. In 2018, they underspent our budget by £500 million. So every time Ronnie says, we don't have enough money for this or we're failing on that, it's simply not good enough. £500 million that could have been spent here. Now, in terms of UK funding, We've got guaranteed structural funding until the end of 2020. We've got £3 billion worth of investment coming in. Your MP's job, I would suggest to you today, is to send them to Westminster and fight for every single bit of investment that they can get from the UK government. If you send me, none of these people even believe in the Freeport. If you send me to Westminster, I will fight for every inch of land to get the Freeport as big as possible, to get big companies in here, to set up here, to have high quality jobs. And guess what? When we have high quality jobs, we need good roads. When we have, when we have high quality jobs, we need good education for highly skilled people to go and work in the jobs. Okay, right. We've got one of the, we've got, We've got 10 free ports that can be allocated to the UK. We've got Presswick Airport, which is the main freight airport in Scotland. That can link up with here. We've, we've also got Port Glasgow and Inverclyde, sorry. Inverclyde itself is the key to the west of Scotland. Historically, this is where all the wealth and trade flowed. We need to create the conditions here so that we can kick start the economy okay. again and bring it here. Thanks, what are, the, what well, are the other candidates going to, 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 to do that? Okay, to thanks. That? Ronnie. V very quickly, you've got to be very careful with city deal money because city deal money is allocated on the, the bid you put in for it in the first place and it's a competitive bid. If you reshape that money and you think it goes out with the original remit, then it can go back into the pot and everybody was going to bid for it again. This happened to Renfrewshire and they lost the city deal it's money because of it. 500 million pounds so, underspent. So that, was the underspent city, so that was the city deal question. As regard to underspend, the way it works is that we get given a budget by the UK government to live within. If we don't spend it at the end of the year, it rolls over and we spend it the next year. So I've not spent it. Over does not spend it by that date. Which, believe you me, we spent it the following year. We've got okay. three billion Thank more, you for that. and the people of Inverclyde are suffering, Ronnie. 
We need right. projects kick-started. We need Listen, things moving. Gentlemen, no, thanks very much. We're not going to get in an argument. It's not here to argue with each other. There's no two parties. We've got more questions on the shop floor. A gentleman here first. And then right, uh, right, uh, right Alec, um, thanks. And probably like yourself, apart from the rest of the four people at your table, I have got a wee bit of experience in the shipyard, shipbuilding and oil uh, building game because I spent most of my life in it. I look around here, I see Willie Smith. You went to me yesterday with me and him around about the, the Kingston and Glen Yard as apprentice players. We left there because there was no work. But Willie and myself got on our bike and managed to travel the world that we'd done because we get skills and we could go anywhere in the whole world and get jobs with. So we're eternally grateful for that opportunity we were given. We never left school, we, we never went to university. We left school 15, 16 years and right into that training centre up there. To, to adapt the tools we got for our future, and I'll be eternal grateful for that. But before I go, there were two two points brought up by Ronnie and um, the the the, the okay. conservative. Uh, right, I don't. It first it says Freeport. Can I tell you something? We had a free port here before when we get commodities from all over the world. We, made, we manufacture it, we sell it all over the world. No, but it's called, it was called IBM. Where's that now? It's gone because the no, capitalists shut it. The capitalists shut it. That's a fact. We used to do what you were saying. we had done, there are plenty of people working in IBM. We got the, the components from all over the world. We manufactured units. We export them again all over the world. It's how the game is finished. We were told, we were told, it's been ship shipyard workers, we were dinosaurs. We were living in a, a, a dinosaur. We should have been in Jurassic Park, North Coronation Park. But we wouldn't take that line down. We decided we were going to fight for our rights to practice our skills, which we were given. Now, Ronnie spoke with Dias. I worked for a company before Dias up there. And if Jackie Blair was here, she would tell you, we tried to start a trade union up there. Where did it go? It went nowhere. Because they used every trick in the book to stop us having a union in that, that place. It's now called Dios. And I'll tell you right now, Ronnie, is there a trade union up there now? This great place. Is it trade unionised? No. no, the answer is no. But there's plenty of trade unions in Ferguson's. Right. There's, aye, there is. That's there's one sitting in front of you. That's right. That's right. There's plenty of trade unions in upper, upper Glasgow, okay. in Yarrow's, in Govan, where I worked. The plenty of trade unions in Portsmouth, in Belfast, you name it, I was there. And, and that was all trade unions. Anything we got, because we worked hard for, we would, we would take the management on and we fought for t terms and conditions. And see the end screen dry dock? The last couple of jobs in there, I worked on them. I worked in the boulder, which is a conversion, the gas tanker, to, to, to get out the oil rig. I also worked in the two uh, RAF. <laughs> there, 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 yeah. They hate to hear the truth, these people, don't they? They, they can take anything but the truth. They can take anything but the truth. Well, right, gentlemen, you, 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 you can take anything but the truth. You can take anything but the truth. The truth of the matter is, Jim. The truth of the matter is. Yeah. We, we've right. never, we've never right, had it. Well, okay. And finish up, I'm saying, I'm proud to have been a shipyard worker. I'm proud of the skills it gave me I went all revolved with. And I'll tell you right now, we're still here. Where's IBM? Away. Thanks very much. Can I not? <laughs> oh, can I not, gentlemen, in the middle there? Is a question? Yeah. On you go. Thank you. Uh, my name's Graham Winters. I'm a local solicitor and trade union and stuff. Uh, one question. Can't hear you. Yeah. Yeah. Hello, can you hear me now? Yeah. yeah. Right. My name is Graham Winters, I'm a local yeah. solicitor and trade unionist, and I've got a question. There has been a lot of talk this evening about the excellent facilities and the skills in building ships and associated, uh, associated things in the, in the yard, in the dry dock and elsewhere. There's also been mention of defence work provided by the Ministry of Defence of the United Kingdom of Great Britain and Northern Ireland. How much defence work do the members of the panel think will come here or anywhere else north of Carlisle if the United Kingdom is smashed to smithereens by Mr Cowan and Nicola Sturgeon and their pals? And in the years after they, they get their decision to do that, they, we will make Brexit look uh, 
I like child's play in the breaking up of the union and it will be unsafe to place defence orders anywhere here. I wonder if the panel can tell us what they see as the prospects for industry here if the United Kingdom of Great Britain and Northern Ireland is smashed to bits. Thanks for that. I'm uh, running, uh, running 30 seconds each then because we're running short on time here for the questions. Uh. 30, 30 seconds, sorry. Uh, thanks, thanks, Graham. Um, <laughs> the situation we've outlined today is the rundown of the lower Clyde side and upper Clyde side over the last 10, 20, 30, 40 years. During that time, Scotland has been part of the United Kingdom. So to put that up as your defence for not becoming independent seems rather strange to me. An independent Scotland will build its own navy if we get shipyards to do it. Because, because we're not to be too stupid to do it ourselves, you know? So, so it's an incredible attitude that people in this room think that people, Scotland is too wee, too poor and too stupid to run its own country. Other countries build their own navy. Now, the important thing being is they don't build massive aircraft carriers with no planes on them. They build what needs to be required to defend their own coastlines. Okay, thanks very much, Ron. Arun. Thank you. Arun. We, all, we already have thousands of jobs here that rely on the UK government and the UK oh, government name? It provides a £3,000 benefit Faz Lane Naval Base. Uh, but there's a whole economies so here. So not in constituency. Okay lads, if you're that, going to that, debate between no, each just, other just I'm going to stop you then. If you're just going to argue between each other. <laughs> <laughs> through the chair you, here. You, Martin. I just want to just very quickly ask Ronnie one question, which is how many um, frigates are being built in England at the moment? What's happening in England right no, now? No, no, I'm just asking, uh, how many frigates are being built in England right now? None yeah, none. 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 Where, are, where are all the frigates? Where are all the frigates for the Royal Navy currently being built? Well, it goes well beyond that. You, you know, you know no, perfectly well, no, doesn't no, matter. No, answer the, Ronnie, answer the question. This is what I'm doing. I'm answering the question. I'm not going to be harangued by a bunch of Labour activists sitting in front of you. You'd be better off there, there delivering some leaflets of a change. The, huh? Ladies and gentlemen. The situation here is, I'm, I'm trying to answer Martin's question here. The situation is very, very clear. You either believe that the people of Scotland are capable of running their own country or you don't. I happen to believe that we are. Now you can make the argument that we are, but we're better off than the United Kingdom. And the fact we're having this debate here today, looking at what's happened to the heavy injury through Inverclyde, through Scotland for decade and decade, has proved to me that we could do this job better. Had we established an oil fund at the same time as Norway did, we were sitting with a trillion pounds in the bank. Right. Okay, ladies and right gentlemen, I'm right. running at a deficit. I'm I'm going to bring it to a halt here because we're, we're just getting off the track to what we're supposed to be here for. Now, I'm going to limit the questions because uh, they're supposed to be winding up for about 8.30 around about. Uh, the candidates have still got two minutes each to reply to their thing, so I'll take the last three questions. Can I answer that one then? I haven't had a chance. Sorry, Jackie. That's okay. Quick, quickly. <laughs> so, I've had to answer that one because uh, Liberal Democrats are the party of in, in the EU and in the UK. And the divorce from the EU has been three years of trauma and will continue to be traumatic if we don't, come up, if we don't stop Brexit. So how more traumatic is it going to be breaking up from England and having a border problems and all the rest of it? How disruptive is that going to be to our economy in Scotland? Even the um, SNP's own commission has said that independence will bring 10 years of austerity. We can't take any more austerity in Inverclyde, so no. Okay, thanks. Last three questions. Jim, the lady in the middle, and your man here, and Alistair, that's it. No more questions after. Jim. Yeah, uh, first of all, um, I would never trust the Tories after what he's have done this district 30 years ago with the Yards and with Scotland's industrial base. Uh, and indeed what you're doing with welfare cuts and austerity for the last 10 years. My question is to Martin. Martin, you promised that if you become an MP and if Labour get in, if they do get into power, that you'll deliver boats getting built here. Well, I'll put this to you, Martin. Cast your mind back maybe 14, 15 years, back to when there was a Labour 
uh, Liberal executive. There was ferries uh, and Ferguson was bidding for them. They ended up going to Poland, so they did. They weren't built at Ferguson's, but since the Scottish Government took over, we've seen a, a number of uh, boats getting built at Ferguson's. So I couldn't trust anything. You say, can you promise us that you could deliver when you didn't deliver in the past? Yes. Thanks, <laughs> Martin. Uh, can, I, can I reply to that as well? Because my party was mentioned. Uh, you can say yes or no. <laughs> uh, the lady in the middle here, if you'd like to pass the microphone over here. The lady with blonde hair. Good evening, panel. Can you hear me? Yeah. No. Can you hear me now? Yep. Yeah. No. Yes. I'll just stand up and talk. Um, I feel I've been here tonight to see how we can save Inch Green Dock, but so far we've discussed ports, we've discussed Brexit, we've discussed in independence. What about Inch Green? The reason we're here. Use of DPH. I think you just want to argue the whole night. I think Mr. Morgan should be given some respect here. He's organised this night, so it was to see what we can do as a people of Inverclyde to save our dry dock. Thank you. Thanks. Well, I'd like you to answer that question and you're summing up. The gentleman now, the fleece. Hey. I was a. I was an apprentice in Scots, served my, my apprenticeship. I will also work for the MOD and I also worked in the dry dock. I was a shop steward as well. Now, I'm sitting listening to all the candidates here. They're all ticking boxes, especially Mr. McCluskey there. Oh, he, 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 oh, let me finish. Let me, let me finish. He's ticking every box. Everybody agrees. I agree with what he's saying. But, but we've had a Labour MP for the last 60 years. We've lost, well, let me finish. We've we lost, we lost our sugar. Excuse no, me, ladies and gentlemen, you're going to talk, talk through the chair. Let the gentleman finish right, his question. Finish the question. We lost, we lost the sugar industry, shipbuilding, engineering. The engineering, do you want to make a show of the engineering places we've lost? Here's these light and bright. Excuse me. What I'm talking about the, the labour. What, what, why me. we lost these things? Is that a question what you're I'm, asking, Martin? Yes, yes. Could the, you ask a question, question, please? Uh, the question I want to know about the dry dock through him and Ronnie Cowan and the Conservative guy. What can I promise you going to do? Not with the Scottish Government, which you mentioned twice, at Westminster, are you going to promise you're going to fight for the dry dock? I'll let Martin answer it and he's summing up. Right. Alistair, you take your... The last question. I've tried to be as clear as possible, both in the letter, I don't know if you've got it there, um, and also in the speech about... Martin, we'll let you answer when you're, you're summing up. You've got two minutes summing up after this last question. Can, do you want me to answer no, this? No, you or? can answer I'll answer it. Okay. <laughs> okay, thank you. Guys, I've got a real question. Let's bring this a bit of decorum. <laughs> <laughs> and hopefully I get it right this time, eh? Would the candidate support Inverclyde Council Environment and Regeneration Committee by creating a subgroup to focus directly on the regeneration of their coastal and land facilities. A subgroup to seek, to view ideas, concepts, plans, co-opt additional members from interested parties, develop pro proposals for the council to promote and implement. Yes. 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 Thank you very much, Alistair. Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen, for your questions. Uh, the candidates now have got two minutes summing up on regard to the, the dry dock, no about Brexit, no about fighting with each other, kicking each other under the table. Good job of table closer right to the ground. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so we'll let the, the candidates sum up. We're going in reverse order this time, so I think it's Martin. Thank you, Alex. Um, I think what we've heard tonight is an awful lot of passion from all sides, um, to say the least. I think that just shows exactly um, why we need to concentrate on inch green and the dry dock and why we need to um, have a proper plan for um, industry in Inverclyde. Um, just, to make, just to make three very quick points, 
Um, the first is, I've tried to answer this gentleman as well, I've tried to be as clear as possible tonight about the actions that we're going to take. Our manifesto, which is here and which you can read online, um, tells you exactly what we're going to do after the 12th of December um, if we are elected as the Government of the United Kingdom. And as I said in my speech, that includes a £450 billion transformation fund, which on day one I'd be going to the Treasury and asking for our share of the money for the um, reindustrialisation of the waterfront and also specifically for um, Inch Green. I don't think I can be um, clearer than that about exactly what we would do. The, 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 the question of um, shipbuilding on the Clyde, we, the, the industry was decimated, we know it was decimated, but what we also know, and I think what I was trying to get at that Ronnie um, maybe avoided there a moment ago, was at the moment we have work um, in Govan until 2035, the Type 26 frigate. We've also got the Type 31E, five of those being built at Resyth and more um, any export um, frigates, will, um, the Ferguson's Yard will hopefully also get the work for them. And if I'm elected as la uh, the Labour MP for this area, I will be fighting for every bit of work from those defence contracts to come um, to either Ferguson's, Inch Green or whatever redevelopment we actually um, manage here. Um, the final thing just to um, say is we need a broader conversation about the quality of work. Um, Robert there mentioned about unions. We need good quality, decent pay, and we also need unionised work. The plans in that manifesto don't just um, affect reindustrialisation, it's also about workers' rights and re-establishing some of the workers' rights that were lost in the 1980s and early 1990s and making sure that people are actually properly protected so they're not um, abused and exploited. And I'm going to leave it there and happy to answer any questions that anyone might have individually um, after this session as well. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Martin. Ronnie. Thank you very much. And to answer the gentleman's question here, we need new fishing vessels. We need a new navy. We need new ferries. What we've got to make sure is that we protect the shipbuilding as we've got so that we actually build those. Or else all that work will have to go abroad, which is why we owe a great debt to the unions up at, the, up at the Ferguson Green, the Scottish Government and local council for fighting to keep those jobs here in Inverclyde. Uh, the question was, uh, would I fight for the dry dock? Well, as I said, the very first meeting I arranged four and a half years ago was with the owners of P Peel Property, the managing director, the CEO of that company, and Jim McCall up in Glasgow, and we hammered out what could and could not be done with Peel Ports. Jim McCall was all for it, I have to say. Peel Property were not. Later, I've discussed with the MOD, the Minister in Charge of Procurement, what we can do with the Inch Green Dye Dock, and he was fully up to speed, and then there was a cabinet reshuffle, and he loses his job. Unfortunately, that's life. Things like these obstacles get thrown in front of you, but I can absolutely guarantee you, I've been on this for four and a half years, and I'm not about to let it go. Um, one thing we should say, how are we going to fund all this? We touched on it earlier on. I will totally opposed weapons of mass destruction, and £205 billion has been used to extend our ballistic missile capabilities and wreak death and destruction on tens of millions of people could easily be re-engineered and re-pointed in the direction of building fishing vessels, ferries, and so forth. <laughs> and Alistair's question, Alistair is absolutely spot on. We need to get a lot of brains onto this. We have to look at our entire coastline. We have to look at what's going to happen at the Power Station. What are we going to do with that land? Build houses on it, really? Is that the best we can do with that piece of land? I brought a guy called Dave Pearson from Star Energy to Inverclyde, and I sat in front of the district council, and he said, this is how we can generate energy from the sea. He was laughed out of that meeting. He's now doing that, exactly that at Clyde Bank right now. We have to open the minds of our council, because they have been too short-sighted and long-term planning and looking at the opportunities we have here in Inverclyde for far too long. Thanks, Ronnie. Arun? Yep. Well, I'd firstly just like to say we're in the age of the internet. You can go online. You can get the facts. Politicians can't just stand up and say whatever they want. The UK defence industry spends £1.64 billion in Scottish industry each, way, each year. It supports 10,000 private sector jobs with major defence suppliers. Now, talking to you, what am I going to do for Inch Green Dry Dock? Now, there's a block grant that comes in from the UK government. It's going to be £1.2 billion. The UK dividend gives everybody in the UK, three, everybody in the UK, £2,000. That's how much it benefits us. The problem we've been having is 
The money we're getting from Westminster, the SNP are underspending it, they're mismanaging the, bu the budgets, and I cannot influence that. On the, on the 12th of December, when we come back, the SNP are in government. So what can I do for you and what can I specifically do for the dry docks? Well, what I can do is advocate for the Freeport idea. That's UK government funding. It's UK investment. It's investment set particularly for this region, for this area. That will bring in the money directly to this area for the people here, for jobs here, for infrastructure here, and for all of the benefits that that can bring. That's what I will do. I've been endorsed by, and I have had talks with many people within the UK, that are now currently the UK government. I've also uh, spoke to every single person on the advisory panel to see how we can best do this. And what I will do is I will push for every single penny, for every inch of land in Inverclyde to make it more prosperous, to bring jobs and to bring investment to this area. I will do that on day one, on the 12th of December, if you send me back there, I will do that for this area. Thanks, Arun. Now we'll move on to Jackie, last but not least. All right. <clears throat> Um, I seem to remember somebody saying about the three gentlemen may be elected. It's still possible for the lady on the panel to be elected. And I think people seem to think, you know, because I'm not a shipbuilder, that I'm not a fighter. Well, I've been fighting for human rights for a long time, and Ronnie can tell you that because I've been to see him twice, Stuart McMillan, and the late David Cairns twice, uh, about human trafficking. So I am a fighter. I am a lobbyist. And that's one of the reasons that I'm standing here now. So don't be frightened because I live in Inverclyde and I really love it. And I will fight tooth and nail for Inverclyde, not just for the industry, I'll fight for that as well, but I'll fight for the whole community. I want the whole community involved. Citizens panel, subgroup, call it what you like. It belongs to us all. It belongs to the people in industry, in tourism. It belongs to those people who haven't got a job. It belongs to those people who've given up hope. It belongs to the children who are living in poverty and we need to lift them out. We need to bring families here. We need to bring um, people that we've, we've got this gap in our population of young people attract them with jobs, attract them with incentives, bring them here and make this a lovely place to live. It is a lovely place to live, but make it for everybody. And that's what I will do for you. Thank you very much, Jackie. Um, I have myself just like to thank the four candidates uh, for tonight. Uh, didn't need the boxing gloves after all. But, uh, thanks very much for that. Uh, I've got a campaign it's the statement we're going to write out here. It's a motion we're, we're asking you to take a wee vote on for us on behalf of the committee. So the campaign to save Inchcreen Dry Dock Hustings. The Hustings supports the need to return the Inchcreen Dry Dock to a fully operational facility, providing skilled jobs for the people of Inverclyde and thereby contributing towards the regeneration of our engineering industries, providing opportunities for the community. As prospective candidates recognise the urgent attention needed to halt the deterioration of inch green dry dock and return it to being a functional marine engineering facility as quick as possible. So I'd just like to take a wee vote uh, for a motion to support this uh, candidate. So if, it, if I show a hands, please. Yeah. <laughs> is, is there anybody against? I am against part of it, and I'm very sorry. I, I completely agree with everything. The only thing is, every single job to me counts. There are 60 jobs that rely on this. I love the enthusiasm, the passion, the broad areas, but, it's, but, it's, but I, would, I, I would disagree with the motion. One or two lines of it, the rest of yeah. it I can get behind. The 60 jobs could be trimmed onto 600 jobs. Yeah. That's, that's a thing. Yeah. I've heard of the Freeport. So. Cool. Thank you very much for this, ladies and gentlemen. I've got another announcement to make on behalf of the committee. Uh, the committee did a sterling job within this, They're totally unfunded by anybody by themselves. So I'm going to ask at the end of the, the meeting, we have some buckets there, if he'd uh, like to contribute towards saving the inch green dry dock, it'd be very much appreciated on behalf of the committee. Uh, as I say, Robert, I've been sterling working on this whole 
funded by their own, they don't get funding from anywhere, it's all funded by themselves. So thank you very much for turning up tonight in your numbers, and thank you for Robert for the, and the committee for inviting me along to chair a meeting, it's been a pleasure. Thanks very much. Thanks, Thank you very much. Thank you very much.